Yes, I know I shaved. Okay, we can get over that, okay? Older mics are usually well regarded for their warmth, and it's even caused division amongst mic nerds when discussing certain gear. For example, consider all the raised voices who proclaim the original U87 to be much better than the newer U87 AI. And a lot of those arguments focus on the greater warmth of the older mics. But I have a theory. I don't think it's just because older is better. I think a lot of that warmth comes down to, well, spit. I know it's gross, but hear me out. Back when I swapped my NT2A capsule for the generic K67 capsule, don't do that by the way, it sounds horrible, but I was shocked when I saw the state of it. It was dusty and it was splattered with spittle. Gross, I know, but it really got me thinking. This NT2A wasn't treated especially poorly. In fact, I think it was pretty average usage and care, especially for a main mic that doesn't get put away often. Like the mic you stream with or the constant go-to mic in a studio. So then if my care was consistent with common use, does this capsule change the sound of the microphone? I mean, that diaphragm is super thin, so it would mean that it would probably be impacted by all the stuff on it, right? So the only way I knew how to figure this out is to get a clean capsule and compare the two. So I called Rode and a few days later, this arrived, the NT2A capsule or the HF1 capsule. So then let's see what happens when we swap these out. First though, I have to take that ugly K67 capsule out and uh, put it where it belongs. A few moments later. So now we have the old capsule on the NT2A, and this is what it sounds like. This is the capsule with all those little sputters and splatters and dust and all this stuff that you kind of expect is going to be possibly on your capsule from all the times you've used it. And I used to use this without the pop filter. This is what it sounds like with the old capsule. Much later. Now we have the brand new capsule in the NT2A. Let's see if you can hear a difference as I go between them. I'm just gonna get little snippets of the old NT2A and mix them in with this to see if you can hear the difference. So now we have the old capsule on the NT2A. Now we have the brand new capsule in the NT2A. The capsule with all those little sputters and splatters and dust. But what do you think as I kind of swap between, let's do another swap. Let's see what this sounds like compared to the old one. This is what it sounds like with the old capsule. And this is the new NT2A capsule. This is the off-axis rejection of the NT2A old capsule. Here I am speaking about three inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm speaking about three inches off the side of the capsule. And now I'm speaking about three inches off the rear of the capsule. First, we're doing off-axis rejection of the NT2A new capsule. This is me speaking about four inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm speaking about four inches off the side of the capsule. And now I'm speaking about four inches off the rear of the capsule like a moron. Now let's do a plosive rejection test. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for a plosive rejection test of the NT2A. To a. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for the proximity effect test of the old capsule on the NT2A. This is me speaking about three inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm directly on top of the capsule. Now for the proximity effect test of the Rode NT2A new capsule. This is me speaking about four inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm directly on top of the capsule. All right, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna listen to how these sound. And I'll be right back. Epilogue. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the older NT2A capsule is darker and it really does seem muted in the higher frequencies, especially those airy frequencies. That's some interesting stuff there. But what is most interesting isn't a worse sound, but in fact, it just has a warmer tone and perhaps might even take some of the harshness of my sibilant highs a little bit better. But this is also historically important. In the past, you could just compare an old mic versus a new mic, and the results would be passed off as differences in the build. But here we have two capsules, one new, one old, in the same body, same board, same everything. And the differences? 
the differences were pretty clear. And remember, the only difference is that little bit of dust and, of course, the spittle that comes along with long-term use of a microphone. But then again, those results do kind of make sense. You see, those lower frequencies would be moving the diaphragm slowly like this, while the higher frequencies would be moving the diaphragm much faster. And with that slightly higher weight on that diaphragm, it wouldn't be able to move as fast, which means those higher frequencies would be dulled out. And yes, that ever so slight change in mass on the diaphragm would be enough to impact it, especially when you consider how thin and light the diaphragm is. So this also explains why older version of mics, like the older U87s, are much warmer. Not that it is just mellowed with age, but everything that has coated the diaphragm has just dulled it down. I have to say, it's really cool that I got to test it this way and actually see the results. I really want to put a thanks to Rode Out for letting me do that. And while I do kind of prefer the warmer sound of the older capsule, I also love the fact that I have this brand new sounding NT2A for future testing. But if you're someone that wants to keep your mic all crisp and clear sounding like the day you bought it, well, there's a reason you get those socks with the mics use them. Also, if you're curious, I will be using this older capsule to see exactly how much damage a diaphragm can take on a condenser mic before it stops working. So get subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Let me know what you thought about this little test down below though. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video.